Okay, this uh, is a little bit of Algebra 1 review. I want to talk about the, um, the point slope form and the slope intercept form. Our goal is going to be to write equations in a line. And they're going to provide us points on lines, or provide us slopes, all this kind of stuff. They handle the different relationships, but they ask us uh, to ultimately come up with equations in lines. This is a very, very useful tool. Uh, throughout the rest of mathematics, and then you'll see it's going to be very useful for the rest of this geometry course. That's why I want to spend some time on it right now. Uh, first thing we're talking about is what we call point slope form. Okay, so point slope form um, is this y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And that's, that's going to be the form that you use all the time. It's just the general format. Um, it's a formula here. Every equation that we come across is going to have a y and x in it. Okay. Uh, and then we'll talk about maybe the situations where that doesn't happen, but we can kind of really think about it um, vaguely as saying that every equation is going to have x and y. The ones that we struggle with that, that change a little bit are, are vertical and horizontal lines, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but every equation is going to have this y right here, okay? Uh, so it's kind of built in to this formula. That y right there never changes, okay? This x is always built in. It never changes. It's always going to be an x. Okay. The other three things, so y1, that will change. y1, you see down here, it's a y-coordinate of a point on the line. Okay. This m is your slope. Okay. And we'll have to figure out what that is a lot of times on our own. And this x1, then, is an x-coordinate of a point on the line. The only thing we want to be careful of, and that's why we put the subscripts here, is that y1 and x1, they have to come from the same point. Okay, so if I'm going to use 3, 2 as x1 and y1, then i got to use 3 and i got to use 2. I can't use 3 as my x and then negative 5 as my y because that comes from my, that'd be y2, not y1. Okay, however, if I did want to use this one here, I could use that as x1 and that as y1. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter, they're both on the same line, so they're both going to yield the same thing. This is slope intercept form. This is what you're most comfortable with, I think. Y equals mx plus b. Uh, m is your slope again, and b is your y intercept. That's why we get this name slope intercept form. Okay. Um, looking back at y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, if we're going to use that approach, which they're going to ask us to do quite a bit today, uh, it says once substituted, you have found what we call point slope form. So if I know my slope, I know my y1, I know my x1, that result is an equation of line. It's called point slope form. Now, usually we don't like that in regards to algebra because um, the things that we want to do with these lines later, like set them equal to each other, uh, see where they cross, that kind of stuff, with system equations, it's easier to do with this format, okay? Uh, for the same thing, for the same reason, graphing is easier to be done with this one. It's not impossible with this one, and when you get to college algebra uh, and even... Uh, algebra 2, you might talk about graphing lines using this uh, through a process called transformations. Um, but this is this is ultimately usually the preferred method. So, obviously these two formats are different, but this one becomes this one if we solve for y. Okay? So here you see down here it says we usually prefer our linear equations to be in slope intercept form. So we solve for y and it turns uh, point slope form into y equals an x plus b or slope intercept form. So what I want to do is go through a couple examples here. Um, and then um, this sets you up to, to have some success on the homework. And then, uh, so today's homework is strictly algebra, one review. Uh, then the, we're going to kind of parlay this stuff into the next couple sections in this geometry text. All right, so uh, I'm going to start off with these, and I'm just going to kind of go through this several different ways. I think I've got four different ways we can do this problem, um, because we could either use, we could use either one of these um, versions. Uh, if my overall goal is just to get the equation, uh, I can use either one of these. If my overall goal is to get the point slope form, I have to use this one. Okay, so you gotta read your directions in your homework. Um, so that's two ways essentially that I could. And then x1, y1 could be either one of these. So that's another two ways. So you got four different ways that maybe we could uh, set this up. But they're all gonna yield the same equation. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do, obviously the main component is slope. 
can answer and find my slope. So uh, I like to stack my points like this because then it just reminds me that you've got to take 2 minus negative 5 and then 3 minus 4. You take your y2 minus your y1 over x2 minus x1. That's as easy as it gets. So we get 2, oh, this was already messed up, 2 minus negative 5. 2 minus negative 5. So 2 minus negative 5 gives me 7. And 3 minus 4 gives me negative 1. So my slope becomes negative 7. So that is going to be used, that negative 7 slope is going to be used in every single um, approach that we use here. I want to try y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And I'm just going to come up here, I'm going to use a as x1 and y1. Negative 7 is m. So I just plug this stuff in. So you get y minus y1, we said was 2. Slope was negative 7. x minus x1, x1 was 3. Okay? This is the point slope form. And if that's all it asks for, we're done. All right? Now, a lot of times, like I said, this form is, is usually preferred for, for further algebra. So all we have to do is solve for y. We have to get this thing by itself. And this is, this is the same process every single time you see one of these. You're going to distribute the right-hand side. So I distribute that. Okay. And now I'm going to isolate y. get y by itself. So I add 2 to both sides in this case. So y equals negative 7x plus 23. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing using the other point B as my y1 and x1. Okay, so I go y, that stays y. Now if this is, if this here is x1 and that is y1, I will have minus negative 5 equals m of negative 7 x minus 4. So just like we did down here, we're going to, um, when I see minus and negative, I'll change it to plus 5. I'm going to distribute on the right-hand side, so it's going to be negative 7x plus 28. And it's just distributing that. And now I will, I'll isolate y by subtracting 5. So negative 7x, 28 minus 5 is 23. You see it, that equation is the same as that. All right, I'll do it a third way. Third way is actually using this format here. Okay, so I'm going to bring down y equals mx plus b. Now the thing here is that when we use this format, we've, we're actually trying to find b. That's the first step here. Um, knowing that these values of 3, 2, and 4, negative 5, those are x's and y's. So let's just use the 3, 2. So the y value is 2. m, we said was negative 7. x. When I use y is 2, x was 3. Plus my b. Okay, so I, that gets rid of all my, my y, my m, and my x, and it means your b. So I should be able to say 2 equals negative 21 plus b. I'll add 21 to both sides. 23 is b. So then that tells me I can take that information along with my slope of negative 7, and I can rewrite my y equals mx plus b uh, form. So y equals m, which was negative 7, times x. b, you just found to be positive 23. Notice that that's the same thing as that and as that. I can generate the same exact thing using the other point, y equals mx plus b. So again, my y, so use the other point, y, let's say it be negative 5. m is negative 7, x is 4. So again, that's using that point there. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Negative 5 is equal to negative 28 plus b. Add 28 to both sides. I get b to be 23. And put it all back together. m was negative 7. x is x. b is 23. Okay. So ultimately you can use any one of those approaches that you want to. Remember this is, this is what you would come up with if they asked you to leave your answer in point slope form 
these are all what you would come up with if they asked you to write your answer in slope intercept form. Okay. Uh, now here, let's talk about what what we're doing, what this really means. When I have y equals um, negative seven x plus twenty three, it's an equation that says when you know what x is, x is zero, one, two, three, four, whatever, it generates a y. So it's generating a bunch of ordered pairs um, that have kind of a similar relationship with one another. Um, now what we what we'd like to do is be able to check to make sure that we've done everything right. Okay, so the idea is that there should be x's and y's that we say satisfy this equation. Okay, well, the x's and y's that satisfy this equation are the x's and y's that are on that line. We know two of them, specifically two of them. And there's an infinite number of them, but we only know what two of them are right now, what we started with. Okay, um, so if I want to see if this is right, basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the x's and y's to that and see if I get a true statement. So I'll plug y of being 2 in, plug x of being 3 in, add to it 23. So it gives me 2 is equal to negative 21 plus 23. Negative 21 plus 23 is 2. Does 2 equal 2? That's a true statement. Okay. So this does satisfy that line. So it tells me that that point is on that line. Let's see if the other... If I go y is negative 5, minus 7, x was 4, plus 23. I get negative 5 is equal to negative 28, plus 23. Does negative 5 equal negative 5? Yes, it does. Any point that is on this line would give me a statement that is true like this. Okay? Um, and that's kind of a way that I would check to make sure that the equation I've written does indeed um, behave with those two points. Uh, with those two points on it. Uh, another, if you're asked to find points, additional points that are on that line, if you guys remember last year, all you did, if, if I have x's and y's, if I want to find some other points, well, let x be 0, that give me y to be 23, well, let x be 1, um, it be negative 7 plus 23, so what's that, 16? Uh, and, and I can keep doing this and go uh, 2, so it would be negative 14, uh, plus 23, so it's going to be, what, 9. Uh, and that pattern uh, is going to continue. Uh, if I plug 3 in, you'll see you get 2. Um, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of, of how we deal with lines. So let's do a couple more examples. Um, so let's say that uh, B is located at negative 4, negative 7, and... C is located at uh, negative, I don't know, 9 and 12. So I'm going to write the equation of the line. So again, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, or y equals mx plus b. First thing for either either method you're going to use, you're going to use slope. So uh, I'm going to go y2, remember y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So subtract my y, so negative 7 minus 12. Okay, it gives me negative 19 up top. Now I'll subtract my x's, negative 4 minus negative 9. So that's going to become what, 5 on the bottom. Now here is the only thing is that that negative 19 fifth doesn't reduce. The last one we had a really nice slope. This one's ugly. Okay, it's just something we gotta deal with. Um, so if I'm gonna go y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, I'm going to choose x1 and y1. So let's just choose this one, x1, y1. There's really when when all these numbers are entered, there's really not a way of saying which one is the best. If there's any up here that have zeros in them, I would choose that one as my x1, y1, uh, just because it makes the algebra down here a little bit easier. If you want to subtract zero from something, that's nice to do. Um, but otherwise, if they're they're both non-zero um, ordered pairs, just go ahead and choose one. doesn't matter. Uh, so now I'm going to go y minus negative 7 is equal to m, which is negative 19 fifths, and x minus negative 4. All right, so I'm going to change the minus and negative to plus. All 
So that's point slope form. Okay, now if I want to go to y equals mx plus, all I have to do is distribute. So you get ni negative 19 fifths x. Now negative 19 fifths times 4, so negative 9, and this is something you might want to do on the side, negative 19 fifths times 4. Well, negative 19 times 4 is negative, uh, what's that, 76, uh, and then 5 over 1, so 5. Okay, so I'm going to get negative 76 fifths, and this is y plus 7 over here. Now, if I want to solve for y, I subtract 7. Now, I'm going to subtract 7 from, you know, the the constant part, the numerical part, okay? So when I have negative 76 fifths and I want to subtract 7 from it, I can't do that without a common denominator. So my common denominator is going to be 5. So it takes this up here to be 35. That's still negative 7. So negative 76 minus 35. Well, if this was negative 75 minus 35, okay, that would be negative 110. This is negative 76 so it's going to be negative 111 over 5. Okay. Um, so now we've got that. And now negative 111 over 5 does not simplify. Uh, we're just going to rewrite this as negative 111 fifths. And that's the equation of my line. You do not want to rewrite this. Okay. It's not terrible here because a fifth will... will um, Simplify to like 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or 0.8. Uh, but I want to kind of get you guys to avoid doing this. This would be the same thing as y equals negative 3.8x. I mean, 111 divided by 5 as a decimal is 22.2. Now, it's not terrible because these two do terminate. But if this was like a third or a seventh or something like that, or a ninth, these decimals probably aren't going to terminate, and you're going to have to um, round them. And then once you round those, that equation is not the equation that would produce those points. Those points would not be on that rounded equation. So when we write equations, we want to leave things as fractions because then they're always going to be exact. Um, if I wanted to do this using y equals mx plus b, so go y, let's, let's use one of, it um, doesn't really matter, I'll use that one because we haven't used that one point yet. Uh, so y is 12, m uh, was negative 19 fifths, x we said in this case would have been negative 9, and then plus b. Okay, so 19 times 9 turns into 171. So we have 12 is equal to 171 over 5 plus b. Okay, well, I want to solve for b. So I'm going to have 12 minus 171 over 5 is equal to b. Well, in order to do that, I need a common denominator, so that's going to be 5 there. Put a 5 up top as well, so 5 times 12, that turns into 60. So we have 60 minus 171. 60 minus 171, negative 111 over 5 is equal to b. That's the same negative 111 over 5 we found here. Uh, so now we got y equals your slope. So is negative 19 fifths times x plus your b of negative 111 over 5. Same equation. Okay. Um, we can we you can keep doing this all day, guys. But the 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 idea is that no matter what your ordered pairs are, no matter what, that process should be maintained. And you, if you go through that process, you're going to get um, the right equation. The, the, what I want you guys to understand and remember, though, um, because it's a little bit of algebra that is incorporated in that stuff, if I'm going to add two fractions, let's say I have a fraction of A over B plus C over D, I'm going to add those. I need a common denominator. Okay, what makes it nice is if I can find the least common denominator. Okay, so in this case, it would be BD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this side by D over D, and I multiply this side by B 
over b. And now that those two denominators are the same, I can rewrite the numerators as ad plus cb all over bd. So the idea there is if I had two-thirds plus four-fifths, this is my A, this is my B, that's my C, that's my D. Uh, if I want to add those, I need common denominators. So my common denominator here is going to be one. I can make, take those two things and make them through multiplication. So I can make those 15. So I multiply this by 5 and that by 5. So that's the D over D that you would see in up here. So it's going to be 10 over 15. And now I multiply this by 3 over 3, so that's going to be this B over B right here. That's that 3 over 3. So that's going to give me 12 over 15. So plus 12 over 15. And now that I have those common denominators, I'm going to go 10 plus 12 over 15, and that's 22 over 15. And we leave it that way. Um, another component that happens within this uh, creating of uh, equal equations is that sometimes you have to distribute fractions. Okay, so if I distribute fractions, like let's say that I have, for instance, like maybe two thirds, and this is x plus four fifths or something like that. I have to distribute here. Okay, uh, so obviously it's going to be two thirds x, but what's two thirds times four fifths? The algebra that we need to realize there is actually the same algebra that was showing up here when we added. Um, Straight across the top, multiply straight across the top, you get 2 times 4 is 8. Multiply straight across the bottom, 3 times 5 is 15. 8 fifteenths would then be 2 thirds times 4 fifths. So those are little things that you need to realize um, algebraically as you're working through these things. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that can help you get to uh, a good understanding of how to come up with equations uh, of lines. Now there's only two examples, but there are many, many examples on my website. There's many examples uh, further on YouTube. Just type in um, how to write equations of lines or find the equation of line and then sit through and watch some of those videos and you'll see they're talking about the same exact process that I am. Something else, guys, uh, I wanted to close this off, but something else that we should talk about is what happens when like when our slope looks like this, when I get, uh, let's say that I have a point uh, 2 comma 3 and a point 2 comma 5. If we think about what that would look like graphically, 2, 3 would be uh, maybe right there, and 2, 5 would be there. So if I graph those, that line is vertical, okay? Meaning that when I do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, my y's are going to give me 3 minus 5. There's a vertical change between those two points, but there is no horizontal change. When I go 2 minus 2, it gives me 0. Well, that gives me two, negative 2 up top divided by 0. We know that you cannot divide by 0, okay? That is what we call an undefined slope, okay? If I want to write the equation of this line, because I should still be able to do this, what I write as is that my x value, because it's, it's a vertical line, so you always write x is equal then to the uh, value that that line is passing through on the x-axis. It's passing through 2. Okay? Um, basically what's going on here is this equation, I'm telling you x is to any, any, line, any point on this line, no matter what point I pull off of it, the x value is 2. The y value can be anything. The y value will be anything. All of it, if I draw that line and continues forever in both directions, the y value can be anything. You see over here that some of those y values were 3 and 5. So any vertical line has an undefined slope, and its equation will be x equals whatever the x values are on that vertical line. In this case, the x values are 2. Um, now, if I have something like this, let's do the other scenario. Let's say I have 3, 5, and... 6 comma 5 as my order pair. So I graph those. So 3, 5 might be like right there. 6, 5 would be over 6 and then up 5 maybe right there. Obviously I'm not going to scale based off the grids here. But that line would be horizontal. We'll do the slope there. y2 minus y1 gives me 5 minus 5 over 3 minus 6. It gives me 0 over negative 3. Well, 0 over negative 3, that is something we can do. We can take 0 and divide it by negative 3. We get 0. So the slope of this line is 
is zero. Slope of this line here, remember, slope was undefined. Slope here is zero. Zero is a defined number. It's a value that we know how it operates and works and how we use it, okay, and what it represents. This we would not know, okay? Um, so sometimes we say this, I, I try to avoid the word no slope or the phrase no slope. You might have heard that um, because it, I think it gets confusing. Well, does that mean that it doesn't exist or does that mean that it was zero? So I don't like to use that. I will use the word undefined or zero, okay? Uh, so this is zero. So now I want to write an equation for this. Well, if this was x equals 2, this has to be y equals, now what are your y values? What are your y values on this line all the time? We say the y values are always 5 on that line, okay? X can be anything. We find out that those values have x values of whatever, but the y value that's stuck to them has to be 5, okay? Um, so that's just kind of something to think about. And these are the two special cases that... Uh, when we look at y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and I said every single equation we come across is going to have an x and a y. It, it's true, they do, but here my x would be that, which we don't really usually write 0x, okay? But that is my m, that's my x, okay? Um, here, that one could be written as, so my m is 1, so I have 1x. Uh, minus 2 would be equal to 0 y, okay? But if I got a 0 coefficient, I don't usually write 0 y. I just don't write it. And then, you know, I put the minus 2 on that side to show you the y-intercept. Um, but x equals 2 that way. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, vertical lines are always x equals whatever you're passing through on the x-axis and horizontal lines are always y equals and then whatever you're passing through on the y-axis.